and welcome to this edition of ACAP Today for the week of August 10th, 2020. I'm Jason Parent with the Aroostook County Action Program. Our feature interview on today's program will be about the start of a new school year, how ACAP's Head Start, Early Head Start, and even our child care programs, which went into session last month, are gearing up for the start of a new school year and how those partnerships with local public schools are critical in advancing in the era of COVID-19. We'll get to that in just a little bit, but first we wanna share with you the news and information that you can use um, on this August 10th or the week of August 10th, 2020. So first and foremost, we wanted to share with you as we did on last week's program in the feature interview that the COVID-19 Rental Relief Program has shifted into a new uh, version of the program. Uh, this is an expanded program which provides up to $1,000 per month for a maximum of three months for rent not covered by any other federal, state, or local program. We do encourage folks to give us a call here at 764-3721. If you registered for the previous program that ran from April through July, uh, for those months, you were al allowed a one-time $500 rental assistance payment. This is a brand new program, so if you've already uh, received assistance in the first program, you can call us back and be registered for this new program. ACAP's navigators and some of our family coaches are running this program, and they would be happy to help you uh, with your rental assistance uh, relief request. We received well over 100 calls last week in the first week of this program, so do please be patient. You can fill out the application directly online yourself. That's the quickest way to get it done. Um, that uh, online application is available right on Maine Housing's website. It will ask you to select Aroostook County and it will take you to the application that will be fed directly into our staff and they will get to you as soon as possible. If you are unable to complete the application online and need help, we can certainly do that, do that for you. Give us a call again at 764-3721 if you need help completing the online application. Otherwise, we encourage you to go right online and fill that out. ACAP is participating along with other organizations and encouraging folks out there to mask up for everyone's health. And you see a number of our team members here uh, leading the way in that charge. All of ACAP employees and any of our facilities when they're in a public part of the facility uh, and coming in contact with individuals that we serve or uh, with our fellow staff members are wearing masks at this point and we encourage you all out there to do the same. Uh, we are providing curbside assistance, just a reminder for that at our 771 Main Street facility in Presque Isle. We also provide this service at our Military Street facility in Holton, but with a call ahead there in Holton. Uh, we are open by appointment only otherwise, so if you would like to schedule an appointment with an ACAP team member for whatever program you might be looking for, please do call us ahead and we will schedule that and there will be certain protocols when folks arrive uh, for the appointment. Our doors are locked at all of our facilities, but we do have ring bells at the front door that help you make communication and contact with uh, folks inside the building. In addition to that, we do offer all of our services uh, remotely over the phone, and we encourage you to reach out to us so that we can help serve you in any way possible. Uh, we, I did speak about the navigators as it relates to the rental assistance program, but we do have a navigator assistance program that we have brought up um, since the start of COVID-19. Uh, these are folks that are in place to help individuals in our community connect with a wide variety of services and help people do just what the title suggests to navigate programs that they may not be aware of or even those that they are aware of uh, but need assistance um, making contact and connection with. So please do reach out to us at 764 3721 if we can be of any assistance to you, especially if you are experiencing a hardship uh, related to COVID-19. Uh, quitting smoking is not easy in the best of times and certainly could be challenging at a stressful time like the times that we are currently facing. So if you are considering quitting and we encourage everyone for their health to do so, uh, to please give Elaine a call here at our office. There are some uh, supports that she can provide. They can all be provided remotely. Uh, so please do give her a call or email her. The number and information is right there on your screen. We also wanted to remind folks that the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center is now open at its new location at 975 Skyway Drive, which is located in the same building as FedEx and Child Development Services here in Presque Isle. Uh, Heidi, Amber, Jeannie, and our team over there are certainly well 
welcoming folks each day at the center. It's especially for folks who are housing insecure or who are experiencing homelessness. But please do reach out to the staff at the facility. They're open from eight to five daily and we'd welcome folks stopping by um, to work at the center. There's an opportunity to connect with housing, employment, and many other services all at the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center located at 975 Skyway Drive in Presque Isle. They can also be contacted remotely. Please do give us a call at our main number and we can connect you with the staff at the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center. The Women, Infant and Children's Program has relocated to 771 Main Street here in Presque Isle for its Presque Isle base of operations and we have uh, established uh, in front of the building a uh, kiosk spaces where uh, individuals who are looking for WIC services can meet with staff directly through the window from the outside of the facility uh, to keep mom and baby as well as staff uh, safe. So we do encourage you to give us a call if you think that you might be eligible for WIC services or would like to find out. Our team can certainly help navigate you through that process. Um, and again, we are offering other clinic location sites including at our Holton Military Street Center uh, where you can also work through the window from the outside uh, with the WIC staff when a WIC clinic is happening at that location. We are meeting with staff inside of our facilities in Madawaska and Fort Kent by appointment only uh, for the WIC program and we encourage you to contact WIC uh, to see if you can make that happen at those various locations. We'll be starting back up in Van Buren again shortly at the community center um, in the coming weeks and more information to come on that. Uh, the WIC farmers markets are in full gear as the summer season is here and the produce is plentiful. Um, the next date uh, is this coming week, Wednesday, um, August 12th, right here at 771 Main Street near Walmart in Presque Isle. There will also be a WIC farmers markets on the 27th of August, the 1st of September. Um, and they are all held from 9 to 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, WIC customers can use their farmer's market uh, and fruit and vegetable checks directly at the uh, Gons uh, Farms stand that will be available at 771 Main Street on those days. The uh, Arista County Action Program as part of its CARES Act funding is pleased to share with you that we are updating our technology to better serve our customers. We are installing a new phone system that has already been implemented here at the Presque Isle facility near Walmart as well as at our Goulville Early Care and Education Center. Uh, the phone system will be expanded to Holton, to Caribou, uh, to Fort Kent and to our Madawaska locations in the coming weeks. Um, it really helps us to be able to uh, connect with you and make sure that there's somebody to answer your phone when you call. So please do uh, be patient as we transition into that new system. Uh, the other technological advance that we wanted to share with you and invite you to check out is our new website. Please do check it out at acap-me.org. It's intended to be more user-friendly and to help access services right online. So please do uh, let us know what your thoughts are about both our new uh, website and our phone system. Again, uh, please be patient on the phone system as the installation uh, continues throughout the coming weeks. Uh, we did share with you a couple of weeks ago on ACAP today that the HomeWorks Home Buyer Education classes are already booking up this summer. The August class uh, has come and gone and it has been, it was a huge success. Uh, we do have classes that are coming up uh, in September, October, and November. If you would like to register for this eight hour home buyer education class, all held over Zoom, we encourage you to do that. Our home buyer, uh, home buyer education specialist, Greg Doak, um, is available. His email address and phone number are there on your screen. It's a great opportunity and there are some great benefits some great incentives toward the purchase of your home for those who successfully complete the class. And the classes have been booked to overflow capacity for the three that have been held uh, in the spring and summer months. And we anticipate a good number booking for the fall as well. So please do consider uh, calling us early to register for those classes in September, October, and November. Uh, we also want to let you know that the Healthcare Marketplace Navigator, our local navigator, Stan Targonski, is available to assist you, especially if you have had a change in employment status which has affected your healthcare coverage. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to potentially see what might be available for you in the net and the marketplace. Uh, please do call us and we will connect you with Stan uh, to uh, make arrangements for you to sit down with him virtually uh, to see what your options may be through the, the Navigator Marketplace online. Line. 
We are also offering financial literacy classes that are now held virtually, and we are tailoring those classes to individuals. So there's not a set date for the next financial literacy class, but we do encourage you to contact Chastity Holland uh, at the information on your screen there. Uh, if you'd like to participate in a financial literacy virtual training, and again, we'll work it around your schedule uh, to um, get you into one of those opportunities. Uh, there is, uh, there are, I should say, limited spots available for 2019 and 2020 high school graduates. You don't have to exclusively be one or the other uh, to participate in the class, but you do uh, to receive a $500 mini grant to help you fund your post-secondary plans. Uh, those are available and there's a limited number of slots, again, for high school graduates to receive that mini uh, $500 grant. Uh, to help with their post-secondary plans. So please do call Chastity Holland if you're interested in a financial literacy course. There are other incentives for those who are not 2019 and 2020 graduates. Uh, the, our Be Proud, Be Responsible curriculum is also being offered remotely online and is being offered to folks as needed and uh, around their schedule. Uh, please contact Chastity Holland who also oversees this program. It's specifically geared to youth aged 16 to 24 and covers a wide range of, uh, of information around uh, making good choices. So please do consider uh, reaching out to Chast if you would like uh, to consider that program or hear more about it. And a couple of uh, big activities are happening this week. Uh, the culmination of the Stuff the Bus project, we are still accepting donations. Uh, there, were, there was a huge drive at Walmart in Holton and Walmart in Presque Isle last week to collect items. Those are now being uh, sorted and being stuffed into backpacks um, and will be distributed later this week. Uh, but we are still accepting donated items to add to those backpacks and to get to any who may register for that late. If you have not yet registered your child for a backpack, contact us or complete the online registration form found on our Facebook page. Again, distribution happens this week uh, in conjunction with the community, the kids community closet, the second chances kids community closet, which is the next item we want to let you know about. That happens uh, this Tuesday, the 11th, Wednesday, the 12th, and Thursday the 13th uh, from 10 to 6 on Tuesday and Wednesday and from 10 to 1 on Thursday at the Aroostook Center Mall. It's available for any child in need of clothing and we're still accepting clothing donations at the United Way office right up until the start of that activity uh, Tuesday. So please do consider making uh, donations of gently used clothing and also if you are in need please show up um, on Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday at the times noted. We are also uh, pleased to be partnering with the Nordic Heritage Center and the Crown of Maine Balloon Festival for the first ever The County Has a Heart Food Drive. Uh, this is a, an opportunity to help us collect uh, items for our community cupboards that not only ACAP has in the Holton um, and Presque Isle offices, uh, but also an opportunity for the other pantries uh, that we partner with uh, little community cupboards throughout Aroostook County uh, that individual communities and organizations have put up across the region. Uh, there are three chances to give at this um, County Has Heart food drive. The first is between Friday, August 14th and the weekend of the Modified Balloon Fest, which is the 28th and 29th of August. Uh, throughout that time, donations may be dropped off at the Welcome Center at the Nordic Heritage Center, or you can also bring your donations to the Movie on the Lawn event on the 28th of August. Uh, the Wizard of Oz will be uh, be shown that evening at 7.30. Donations will also be accepted at the Star City Syndicate concert, which will be held on Saturday, August 29th at 6 p.m., also at the Nordic Heritage Center. So we thank Nordic Heritage Center and Crown of Maine Balloon Festival for this partnership to raise um, some non-perishable food items that are very much in need for our local uh, community cupboards. And one thing before our last, uh, the senior yoga series that we're partnering with Presque Isle Recreation and Parks Department to offer is um, happening at Mantle Lake Park over 10, uh, at 10 a.m. for four consecutive weeks. There are still room for applicants to register. Please call 764-2545 to register uh, between eight and five Monday through Friday. And finally, as we've been reminding you uh, for a number of weeks, our community needs assessment is starting to wind down now and we encourage, we have well over 1,100 folks who have responded to this survey, both online and in print. If you need one in print, please do reach out to our office and we will get one out to you in the mail with an, an envelope that has postage prepaid to return to us. 
Uh, we also have our survey monkey available online. Uh, that link can be found on our Facebook page and on our homepage of our website. These really help, uh, the results of this survey really help us plan how we support our local communities and what we focus our work on over the coming few years. So we really want to hear from you through the ACAP Community Needs Assessment. Again, online or give us a call and we will mail a printed copy to you for you to finish, complete and uh, get back to us. And it is now my pleasure to welcome our topic this week um, is, of course, our early care and education programs here at ACAP who are gearing up for what we call the start of a new school year, at least where traditional school uh, comes in. Uh, but many of our programs here do run year round with a few weeks off here and there. I'm pleased to welcome uh, back to the program Megan Barnes, who's a program coordinator in early care and education. Megan, welcome back. Thanks for having me. And two of our center managers are with us, um, Leslie Ramsey, who oversees centers in Central Aroostook. Leslie, it's uh, nice to see you and welcome back as a repeat guest. Thank you. And I believe Lisa Bates, this is your first time uh, on ACAP today, or is it not? I think it is your yeah. first time. Mm -hmm. You've avoided it so far, so okay. we caught you. We caught up with you, and Lisa Bates uh, oversees <laughs> our um, centers in uh, the southern Aroostook area, Holton and Dyer Brook. So welcome uh, to all three of you. Uh, Megan, let me start with you um, with, uh, you know, there's a lot of folks talking about, you hear it on the nightly news, both the local and the national news, about how do we safely start up a new school year in the ACAP um, has had children in childcare programs for over a month now. Uh, we are looking at expanding the number of children that would be um, regularly participating in instruction, at least in some version in person. So talk about the plans and what your considerations are um, and, uh, and how things are going with the planning process. Sure, and, and I'll start um, from what we've previously um, put into place. Uh, we started um, with COVID going um, strictly remote services to families. So um, the teachers and the classroom staff would um, pull individualized plans for students in their classrooms. And we um, provided meal service um, where we would deliver meal services. We would also deliver educational packets um, based on the needs and interests of the individual children we would provide um, materials to be able to perform some of those activities in the packets and really um, promote some of that family engagement. Um, we also set up a virtual um, learning formats through Zoom um, and, other, um, and, and other technology offerings out there. Uh, we um, focused on social skills, we focused on socialization, keeping children connected to the other kiddos in their classrooms. Um, we found that that was very successful. A lot of families really enjoyed being able to interact with other families that are going through the same, you know, situations, having their children at home. Um, you know, we understand that families, you know, we're the experts in education. Families are critical in that partnership, but we also understand that that's a lot to take on when you have two or three um, children in, your, in the household and being able to keep up with the needs of each of the children individually. So we tried to really set up a lot of supports virtually um, for those families. And we did find a lot of success. We did realize the um, needs for that face-to-face -face, um, service, particularly around childcare. You know, families are trying to work. When um, businesses started opening back up, we had to make a decision on what that was going to look like. So we offered, um, we focused on our existing families that had been enrolled with us prior to COVID. And we provided um, childcare at a smaller ratio, more staff um, to be able to focus on those health and safety protocols that we get our guidance through um, CDC as well as the Department of Health and Human Services. So um, myself and um, a couple of our coworkers really focused on different areas, whether it was transportation or um, direct health and safety and classroom practice at the centers so that we could really gather as much information um, available to really support and serve these children in the safest environments possible. Um, we slowly brought back childcare families. We found that um, 
it, it really was successful. Um, it, it's, it was, we had to take into account the comfortability of staff um, being back into those uh, environments as well. So we focused on PPE, we focused on um, cleaning and getting a cleaning schedule. Probably, I sh maybe shouldn't say this, but a little bit stricter than previously because we know more today than we did you know, three months ago. Um, so we really focused on having that health and safety and that cleaning schedule and disinfecting um, really part of the everyday learning environment. And without disrupting the learning that was going on to the, into the classrooms, we were able to bring that all in and to really be efficient um, in those classroom settings themselves. So that led us to, okay, we provide summer services to children with IEPs and children transitioning into kindergarten. How can we effectively serve a larger group? We yet again went back to the planning stages around health and safety was always the guiding practice. And we realized that we could add a component to those families that weren't comfortable yet to returning to face-to-face -face services and really focusing on our group sizes. So what we did was we offered what's called driveway visits where we provide materials, we provide activities and lesson planning to be able to interact with the family as a whole, as well as the teacher being able to really focus on those individual needs with the child and to continue to be able to provide those learning opportunities based around our curriculum, as well um, as our assessment tools. So this became um, really, a, to me, a cornerstone. It was really enlightening to realize that we can provide quality services in very different formats. Um, our goal was always to get back to face-to-face -to -face, and um, that's what the plan is for moving forward. We have some start dates that I can share. August 31st, we are planning to return face-to-face um, -face services for our early Head Start programs at the centers. This will um, include children zero to three that are already enrolled. Um, if you are interested um, in applying for the Early Head Start program, we have a link that we can share um, for an application, or you can contact any of the centers and our center administrative assistants and center managers can assist with that process. Um, but we are going to bring back the Early Head Start programming August 31st, um, teachers will be providing in the classroom um, programming. We're going to start at half days for our programming. Um, we're still working on transportation as of right now. We are encouraging families to provide parent transportation because of the safety limitation um, around transportation. It's still really gray. We've worked very closely with our public school districts um, to work on a plan on how to effectively and safely transport children in our current situation. Um, we still haven't gotten there quite yet, but as far as in the classroom, that will resume on August 31st for children zero to three. Our Head Start program and public pre-K partnerships, our targeted start date is September 8th. Our teachers and our program managers have been in contact um, with families. Um, we have discussed, you know, the transportation limitations as of today, and that could change um, and before programming starts. But as of today, we've discussed health and safety protocols. They've been updated um, most recently last week on the current guidance that was provided. Um, we got that completed and sent that out to the staff. We are going to share that with individual families so they know exactly what's to be expected um, from the center as well as um, the family unit uh, starting the week after next. We're gonna start those visits. Um, we have been talking about what the inside of a classroom is going to look like around ratios, the amount of children that we can serve, how many adults it's going to take or staff it will take to provide a safe, um, learning environment for the children um, and group sizes overall. You know, 
we know what the restrictions are. We know what the guidance and the recommendations are. Um, as of right now, we're looking at a group size of 10 to 12 for preschool age, which is three to five, and a group size of eight for children zero to three in the classrooms. Um, and then of course, with our special education services that we provide, this summer we started, um, I worked very closely with CDS. Um, it was uh, one of those areas that we understand um, social distancing is difficult. So we there again went back to our health and safety protocols and really created an environment so we could bring back our higher needs children because we did find that that's one area that was very difficult to, to maintain those um, virtual visits, those virtual interactions with the teachers. It was hard on the families, it was very hard on the children. So we did about midsummer, July 15th, I believe, we started to bring back some of those kiddos to work directly with an individual staff. Um, we followed health and safety protocols and we reduced um, contact hours so that instead of a three and a half hour session, we did two hour session so that we could spread the children out and we didn't have a larger group at one time. And that is our plan on September 8th for our children with special needs is to continue with those shorter sessions um, so that we can serve more children and do it in a, the safest manner possible. Okay, all right, there's a lot, a lot of information there. And one of the areas that I wanna focus in on, Megan, with, uh, let's start with Lisa Bates on this one is, there's a high level of integration with the public school systems in all of our programs across Aroostook County. And that's especially true in Southern Aroostook where we have uh, facilities uh, embedded with the Region 2 School of Applied Technology where we serve as sort of the learning laboratory or classroom, if you will, for the early care and education students in the entire Southern Aroostook Regional Vocational Education System. Also in Dyer Brook um, at RSU 50, where we serve as the partnership uh, program for the pre-K um, curriculum there. And right at your center on Military Street, where you're your home based out of Lisa as well, where uh, meals are integrated with SAD uh, 29 down there. So there's a high level of integration. Talk to me about how the collaboration and, and, and communication with the school districts has been. It usually is very good, but I imagine it's even more necessary right now as, as things are changing day to day. It is, and um, I've certainly been in touch with the school systems in our area and working closely with them. Um, some of the SAD 29, SAD 70 are still working on their plans as far as the pre-K program goes at this point. So we've been in conversation with them um, about what that's going to look like um, because we do partner with them and they do pick up some of our children here at the center um, to transport to pre-K. So it's looking at all of those little components and trying to figure out how it's gonna work. Um, some uh, The Holton School District is going to be releasing the children at 1.30 this year. Um, so it's looking at what is that pre-K program going to look like? Are they going to start early? Um, will they continue with the same schedule? Will we need to alter our schedule to help accommodate kids so that they can attend both of our programs? So um, we've been working really closely with them. So um, more to come on that <laughs> as um, school boards meet, meet those, make those final decisions. Indeed. Leslie, I imagine the same is true in Central Aroostook where we're dealing with, you know, multiple school districts as well. Um, is, is this a, a more, this is obviously probably a more challenging situation, even though we've had some practice going through several months of this at this point, where not all public schools are adopting the same measure as they did um, in the spring when they sort of all shut down simultaneously. The schedules appear to be very different. So it's not a one size fits all uh, solution for all of Aroostook County, is it, Leslie? No, I think, I think what you'll see is like a lot of school districts are tailoring the plans based off of their populations. And so I, I would say like the challenge is it is that it's always evolving and plans are always changing. Hmm. So you, you have to be in communication with all your partnerships in order to get the best plan for each program that you're responsible for. Uh, Megan mentioned it earlier, but back to you, Leslie, and then I wanna get uh, 
Lisa's input on this as well. Um, first, I want to talk about how our staff are um, are responding and how, how they're working working through these new challenges. I mean, they were wonderful in terms of getting the distance education out and uh, making sure that children had activities at home and the connections were happening remotely. Um, how was the transition for staff? And then let's talk about children as well. So let's take staff and then students, Leslie, and then go to Lisa for that. I think, I think you mentioned it earlier when you talked about across the nation and you can see the news reports. We have the same issues up here in Aroostook County as other school districts have across the country. You have some staff that are ready to come back and I'm all in. And then you have staff that you have to really sit down and like really talk with and really get them on board and really explain the safety, health and safety protocols that Megan talked about. And children. So it's all, each person oh, and each teacher is different. And okay. we have to deal deal with every person as an individual in order to meet their needs as well. And children and families, how are children and families responding in your area? It's a mixed bag. It really is a mixed bag. You have some parents that are ready for their kids to come back eight hours a day, every day. And then you have parents that are like, no, we'll do virtual. But I mean, we're definitely going to have services to provide to all families. Lisa, is that similar to what you're seeing in Southern Aroostook? In, in Southern Aroostook, um, <clears throat> I've been very blessed with wonderful staff who have been um, very willing to come back. They've been excited about coming back um, <clears throat> and being with the kids. Many of our families are very supportive of our programs and very excited to have their kids come back. Um, kids have missed being with us. And so many of the uh, families and parents are very supportive and are, are looking forward to being back. So, yeah. Thank you, Megan. Let me just get a, your, your take. We talked about um, with how educators are preparing, what they're thinking, uh, what we've done on the, on the technical side of things. Um, what we, we, we've been hearing some new regulations around children and wearing masks. All of our staff are obviously um, uh, using their pro proper uh, proper protective equipment, um, but what what is the guidance around children and what are we doing here at ACAP? Sure, um, this is a fairly new um, area for us, um, probably because of the what I explained previously around group sizing. Now that we're planning um, to reopen with more services provided in different venues. Um, I, I think you know, we just recently reached out to each one of our families to talk about the updated guidance around uh, the recommendation for children five years of age to wear masks. Um, we serve children in our preschool rooms from three to five, ages three to five. So we're really gonna focus the first couple of weeks um, but being back in session around education and educating um, around health and safety, about crap classroom rules, and about social stories around masking and the importance of masking. And you know, regardless of what the most current medical advice is on masking, um, it's one of those areas that we've had a lot of positive feedback from families around the importance of uh, children being masked um, during the day where we're planning on bringing um, incorporating mask breaks into the program um, throughout the day for the children, as well as really focusing a lot of outside activities where you can socially distance. Um, and that will um, negate some of those required mask wearing time in session for the children. Um, for the most part, we have, like Leslie had mentioned, we have parents that just might not be at that place yet. This is still new. This is still um, unsure. And we all know that if you're like me, I'm the type of person, the more information I know going into something, um, it's the e easier for me to um, you know, follow the rules, I guess, for lack of better words. So we have a lot of families that you know, just may not be quite there yet. I have a lot of... Um, hope and I, I feel that the positive feedback we've gotten around understanding the recommendation 
um, of the importance of children being wearing masks is, is going to be very helpful. And I think starting as early as we have with that education with the families and the children has made a difference. We started doing it in our classroom, our childcare classrooms, and it's almost like you're not cool unless you're wearing a mask. <laughs> um, it's, you know, one wears it and then and they all want them and that's great. You know, and we just go with that. We make it very informal and we make it, um, you know, understanding about germs, which we've always had a huge focus on hygiene and um, keeping the classroom clean and um, disinfected. So this kind of just fits into our existing programming. We had a school year that ended like no other and a school year that's about to start like no other coming up. Uh, let's get last thoughts from each of you. I know that there's a time crunch. Uh, Megan has a, an 11 o'clock and we're running up against that uh, time barrier. So let me start with you, Leslie, and uh, get your anything that we missed that we didn't talk about that you wanted folks out in the community to know about what we're doing here at ACAP as it relates to early care and education programs in the era of COVID-19. I think the most significant is to be flexible and be patient with us and the fact that Safe, health and safety is our number one priority, and that is the priority that constantly is changing. Indeed. So definitely be patient with us. That's the theme of the day. Lisa Bates, what would you like to add to that? I agree with Leslie in the being patient with us, <laughs> and um, because things change from day to day, and we're always, you know, giving new information, and, uh, and so we just hope people are patient with us. But the other thing I'd like to add is that if people have children um, that would, and they would be interested in applying for our program, give us a call at our centers. We'd be happy to help walk you through the application process or schedule you a time that you could come in and um, fill out an application for any of our programs that we have available. Excellent, and Megan Barnes, the last word will be yours. I just want to add that it, you know, the importance of feedback and the continued communication that I feel has been excellent at the at the center level. I feel that um, we've had time, timely feedback from those govern, governing agencies around health and safety, around how to effectively educate children in a time of COVID. I I think that it's important that we. Uh, we take that feedback we get from our children and families that we serve um, to, you know, to perfect all areas of programming. And it's been very helpful and it's been a very enlightening process. Um, but I think that we're stronger and we've learned a lot of lessons. We've learned valuable lessons that I don't believe we're ever going to have another snow day look the same um, in the future of ACAP. We have found ways to provide quality work in um, non-traditional or um, unfamiliar formats. So I would like to carry that forward and I would like to thank all of our families um, for being part of that and the staff. So. It's a great place to end it, Megan, with, uh, with a huge thank you because the staff um, have been heroes uh, all together across Aroostook County. We have uh, early care and education centers from Fort Kent clear down to Dyer Brook and uh, not only have the professionals in early care and education, but you've had a lot of colleague uh, heroes as well in, in other programs from heating assistance to workforce development to WIC and prevention and uh, just across the board and navigators and family coaches that work uh, with all of you as well, uh, helping to keep families um, in in, uh, in, a, in a safe uh, environment and, uh, and comforted uh, during a turbulent time when folks had unrest that they were feeling themselves. So with that, uh, before we leave you uh, today, we do want to uh, remind you to stay in touch with us because um, as our three guests today just pointed out, there's a lot of new information coming out and there's a lot of change happening rapidly. So if you are in need of any services that we may offer or just have a question that you'd like to ask us, please do call us, reach out to us by email at acap-info at acap-info 
www.ccme.org. Connect with us on Facebook. There's lots of new information posted there daily. Uh, look for us on YouTube where you can see some of our early care and education professionals that have prepared some wonderful activities that are for individuals beyond just our students. Um, and uh, also connect with us on our new brand new face, a uh, bit brand new website, I should say, acap-me.org. And we leave you as we do each week with our snapshot of the week. These are some of our um, community partners, as well as our workforce development, family coaching, improving outcomes for youth, and tobacco education and drug free rustic, as well as 5210 Let's Go uh, professionals that were up in the St. John Valley last week. This team uh, was a hoot. I had fun with them in Madawaska and in Fort Kent last week, and we'll be working on a similar event uh, in Presque Isle soon, and it was great to connect with some folks up in the Valley last Friday um, at this event. So uh, please do uh, Look us up online, connect with us in other ways, um, and reach out to us. And as our uh, guest noted today, if you have a child, uh, a preschool age child, and would like to connect with us about our early care and education programs, we are still accepting enrollment uh, for this fall. Please do reach out to us um, and we'd be happy to help you. On behalf of our three guests today, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this edition of ACAP Today. We'll be back next week with another episode. Until then, have a great week. <laughs>